improve uh, their recruiting system in order to maximize available manpower. Right now, they, they've got too many military age males and women uh, walking around in Ukraine that should be in the military. And you've got thousands of Ukrainians, uh, military age males that are here in Germany and Poland and Romania. Uh, Ukraine has got to fix their recruiting system and get these uh, fit, able-bodied men and women uh, into uniform. Uh, they're going to have to increase production of ammunition and weapons in Ukraine. Some of these things are already happening, uh, but it is possible when you're at war to increase production, even with Russian missiles raining down on your cities. I mean, think about what Germany did in, in 1944. The aircraft production for the Luftwaffe peaked in 1944. Uh, that's after more than two years of uh, steady bombing by the Royal Air Force and the U.S. Uh, uh, Army Air Corps, uh, bombing the hell out of German cities, but yet German aircraft production increased. So I think Ukraine can do that with some uh, improving efficiency. Some Western companies are already there helping. Um, I think Ukraine is going to be, uh, they're working to be ready to employ F-16s probably in the summer. Um, you know, it's one thing to train pilots to fly, and, and Ukraine will have no problem finding pilots who can fly, but uh, being able to operate in a very, very dense air defense environment, uh, conducting combat operations, that's a, that's a different matter. So they will, I think they will be smart about how they finally do employ F-16s this summer. They're going to have to continue to improve air and missile defense uh, and, and build it and make sure that they're power generation infrastructure is resilient. Uh, it, it's going to be under siege every day for the next three or four months, as, it's, as we're already watching right now. Uh, we've talked a lot about uh, the requirement for them to get better at operating in a very, very difficult, challenging, contested uh, electronic warfare environment. Uh, I anticipate that they will continue sabotage efforts against Russian energy infrastructure and logistics inside Russia, as well as in Russian occupied parts of, uh, of, of Ukraine. Um, I think they will continue to put pressure on uh, Russian forces in Crimea, uh, both Navy as well as Air Force, and particularly the large logistics hub at Zhenkoi in the northern part of, of Crimea, which supplies Russian forces in the south. And then finally, uh, keep maintaining pressure uh, on the Russian logistics system. I, I think uh, Russia's dependence on North Korea for artillery ammunition is a giveaway of how desperate they are. And my Ukrainian friend tells me that the quality of the North Korean artillery ammunition is really poor. It's unsafe. So uh, there's exploitation opportunities for the Ukrainians against Russian logistics. I, I would hate to be a Russian private sitting in a trench this winter, knowing that my leadership not only doesn't care about me, they're not going to fight to deliver what I need, and, and I'm going to get used as cannon fodder. I think this is opportunity for Ukraine.